The skull consists of the cranium and the facial skeleton. The cranium is the bony container for the brain and the foundation for the facial skeleton. The cranium is made up of a number of originally separate bones. These lines of fusion, known as sutures, show where the bones are joined. The principal bones that form the cranium are the occipital bone behind and below, the parietal bone and temporal bone on each side, the sphenoid bone and the frontal bone. The two bones of the cranium that we're concerned with at present are the occipital bone and the lower part of the adjoining temporal bone. To see the full extent of the occipital bone, we'll take the mandible out of the picture. The occipital bone extends all the way from here at the back to here underneath. The most striking feature of the occipital bone is this large opening, the foramen magnum, through which the spinal cord and its accompanying structures pass. The part of the occipital bone in front of the foramen magnum is called the basilar part, often referred to as the base of the occiput. The two temporal bones converge on it from each side. We'll look at them in a minute. Let's look at the occipital bone on the inside in a skull that's been divided in the midline. Here's the foramen magnum. Here's the basilar part of the occipital bone. It slopes forwards and upwards, more steeply on the inside than on the underside, since it's triangular in sagittal section. Let's look at some more details in a skull that hasn't been colored. On each side of the anterior half of the foramen magnum are the two occipital condyles. The occipital condyles are the joint surfaces which articulate with the atlas vertebra to form the atlanto-occipital joints. We'll look at these joints in a minute. The outline of the front and the top of the cranium is well known to us from our everyday observation of surface anatomy. It's perhaps surprising to see how far round the back of the cranium curves and what an extensive overhang there is behind. The overhang is formed by the part of the occipital bone that's behind the foramen magnum, the squamous part. The overhang is obscured by the neck muscles that are attached to this broad area on the occipital bone. The bone bears the marks of their attachment. This lump in the middle is the external occipital protuberance. This faint ridge, leading out toward the mastoid process, is the superior nuchal line. Below it is the inferior nuchal line. We'll meet the structures that are attached here later in this section. Now that we've looked at the occipital bone, Let's take a look at the temporal bone. It's quite a complicated bone. To see its full extent, we'll again remove the mandible. The temporal bone goes from here on the outside to here underneath. This is the petrous part of the temporal bone. This is the squamous part. A prominent feature of the temporal bone is this large projection, the mastoid process. As we'll see, it's the origin of some of the muscles that move the head, including the sternocleidomastoid. It's easy to feel the mastoid process here, behind and below the... This is the zygomatic arch, formed largely by the temporal bone and partly by the adjoining zygomatic bone. here on the underside of the root of the zygomatic arch. This complex curved surface articulates with the condyle of the mandible to form the temporomandibular joint. This is the external auditory meatus leading to the middle ear. 
This long, sharp projection is the styloid process. Just at the base of the styloid is the little stylomastoid foramen for the facial nerve. Medial to the styloid process are two major openings for blood vessels. The carotid canal passing forwards for the internal carotid artery and the jugular foramen passing backwards for the internal jugular vein. Just above the occipital condyle is the hypoglossal canal for the hypoglossal nerve. Let's take a brief look at the occipital and temporal bones from the inside. Here's the squamous part of the occipital bone. Here's the basilar part. Here's the foramen magnum. Here's the squamous part of the temporal bone. Here's the petrous part, which contains the structures of the inner and middle ear. Here's the jugular foramen on the inside. This big groove behind it is for the sigmoid sinus, the main venous drainage channel for the brain. Below and medial to the jugular foramen is the hypoglossal canal. Above the jugular foramen is the internal auditory meatus for the vestibulocochlear and facial nerves. The carotid canal ends here at the foramen lacerum, as we'll see in the next section.